pancreas pancreas is said to be mixed gland pancreas generally called as mixed gland why why pancreas is called mixed gland it is having both exocrine and endocrine glands inside exocrine which secrete enzymes endocrine which is going to secrete hormone so that's why we say the pancreas as mixed gland okay so then uh, about the pancreas the anatomy of the pancreas we have to talk about it is about 15 cm long weighing about 85 g lying next to the duodenum location it lies next to the duodenum and we said now it is a mixed gland because it is having both exocrine and endocrine function both exocrine function and endocrine function okay exocrine cells of the pancreas secrete about uh, the 1 liter of pancreatic juice a day uh, containing at least three enzymes to aid the digestive process what are the enzymes of the pancreatic juice we learned the pancreatic juice is going to release amylase enzyme for the digestion of carbohydrate next trypsinogen trypsin chymotrypsin carboxypeptidase lipase So all these are the enzymes released from the exocrine portion. Exocrine cells of the pancreas is going to secrete enzymes for the digestion process. Okay. Then endocrine portion. What about endocrine portion? Endocrine cells of the pancreas form group of cells called islets of Langerhans. This is to be remembered. Islets of Langerhans. So these islets of Langerhans is about just two percent in the total. That one to two percent in between will find ninety-eight, ninety-nine percent is going to be exocrine portion only. Okay, so that islets of Langerhans located around the capillaries within the lobules, about a million islets of uh, Langerhans, each with approximately three thousand cells, comprise. About 1.5 percent, 1.5 to 2 approximately, we have to talk about 1.5 to 2 percent of cell that uh, endocrine portion we can say remaining all exocrine portion only. So what are present in the islets of Langerhans? <laughs> islets of Langerhans. There are three types of hormone secreting cells: the alpha cells, beta cells. Delta cells, alpha, beta, delta. We have uh, one more hidden, that is F cells, which is not mentioned in our uh, in the intermediate stage, which we don't have. Then uh, basically they use it to say that uh, three types of uh, hormone secreting cells. Alpha cells are going to secrete glucagon. Alpha cells secrete glucagon. Beta cells secrete that uh, insulin. Hormone from the beta cells is insulin. Delta cell secrete somatostatin. Did you remember we have somatostatin earlier also? Somatostatin. That we, we I'll remember you the growth hormone, releasing hormone, growth hormone, inhibiting hormone. These are the hormones which are released from hypothalamus. and uh, they are going to stimulate the growth hormone or somatotropic hormone of the pituitary gland adenohypophysis isn't it adenohypophysis of the pituitary gland is stimulated and by the stimulation of these two hormones from hypothalamus okay so this uh, the particular we have they have other names let's talk about one after another somatocrinin Somatocrinin. I use little bit bigger pen to show all of these. So our board is uh, somatocrinin. Okay, somatostatin. Somatocrinin. Somatostatin. Somatotropin. Somatocrinin. Somatostatin. Statin and Somatotropin. We have three three hormones. Somatostatin. Okay, so don't get confused. Uh, not to get confused here. I'm comparing with the pituitary gland. Okay, so 
the who is somatostatin uh, somatotropin let me erase it uh, let me erase it okay so somatotropin who is somatotropin gh growth hormone of anterior pituitary okay somatocrinin whom we call somatocrinin somatocrinin means gh rh growth hormone releasing hormone of the hypothalamus is called as somatocrinin somatostatin gh ih so what is the function of uh, somatostatin inhibit the secretion of gh growth hormone okay somatostatin so i i use it to be ask you generally somatostatin you remember it as somatostopin that means it stops it stops what it stops the growth hormone from where it is released it is released from hypothalamus we are talking about this one only growth hormone inhibiting hormone is also called somato somatostatin is also called somatostatin okay so this one somatostatin growth hormone inhibiting hormone okay more mess happened i am clearing so here also we'll find somatostatin isn't it the delta cells are going to secrete so here also you remember it as somatostatin no problem what it stops it stops the action of glucagon it stops the action of insulin okay so then there what it stops in case gh ih or somatostatin released from hypothalamus is going to stop is going to stop the secretion of gh growth hormone okay got my point here so you remember it as statin instead of statin stop in don't write as stop in but remember it as somato stop in what it do it stops okay so question we will will be asked in the with the same clarity like the delta cells of the pancreas secreted somatostatin inhibits inhibits the action of insulin and glucagon you should remember okay so the hypothalamus secreted somatostatin if hypothalamus hypothalamus secreted somatostatin inhibit growth hormone so that is that by the name statin make it static as it is or you remember it as stop in it stops okay what it stops from where it is released that's a question raises what it stops from where it is released okay somatostatin released from the pancreas what it stops yeah it stops insulin and glucagon somatostatin released from the hypothalamus of the brain what it stops it stops the action of growth hormone of the anterior pituitary so that you need to remember okay so let me say here as i am saying only the the three types of cells only for you alpha cell beta cell and delta cell delta cell okay delta cells we are talking about so these uh, delta cell alpha cell secrete glucagon beta cell secrete insulin and delta cell secrete somatostatin we have one more cell f cells f cells are going to secrete pancreatic peptide we don't have but just for information that acts that inhibit the somatostatin more complicated process we going to learn this in mbbs okay so they, these hormones these hormones regulate the level of glucose in the blood that means we are talking about insulin and glucagon the more ma major participants of that participant here are two insulin and glucagon these hormones are going to regulate the level of glucose in the blood when the blood glucose level becomes excessive that insulin acts on the three target tissues liver muscle and adipose cell i will see now how that it acts on the liver insulin insulin causes the liver to take up the glucose and convert it into glycogen and fat it facilitates the uptake of the glucose in the muscle and adipose cell causing the levels of glucose in the blood lowered or normalized this is the basic function that by mechanism wise we will take the liver as an example and we'll see but let's see once again insulin causes that liver to take up the glucose and convert it into glycogen and fat it facilitates the uptake of glucose in the muscle and adipose cells causing the levels of the glucose in the blood lowered and normalized what is the function of somatostatin 
it acts as paracrine to inhibit the secretion of glucagon and insulin both will be inhibited over by somatostatin by the necessity and requirement okay so uh, that uh, we'll discuss that we'll discuss that disorders uh, insulin deficiency all the discuss uh, we'll discuss here but before we go there we need to see the functions of the insulin and glucagon detail so let us see one sub uh, location of the pancreas they said it is near to the duodenum i'm showing in the diagram that there is a pancreas you see this is the pancreas and uh, the pancreas is having sni that's sni and in the pancreas itself the islets of langerhans you can see my in microscopic view the islets of langerhans i am showing with alpha beta and delta cells and f cells you can see pp cell what is pp cell f cell what i said pancreatic peptide okay so this uh, the uh, endocrine portion we call this as islets of langerhans this is only called as islets of langerhans okay so this only contain alpha delta and f cells okay let's talk about one after another alpha cells so first of all alpha cell secrete glucagon which is a polypeptide glucagon so what is the function of glucagon glucagon raises blood glucose level that means glucagon converts the glycogen into glucose converts the glycogen into glucose so accelerating the breakdown of glycogen into glucose in the liver so that makes the promoting the conversion of other nutrients such as uh, amino acids and lactic acid it has effect on amino acids and lactic acid into glucose in liver what do you call it as gluconeogenesis enhancing the release of glucose into blood so simply we say here that if glucagon is more what do you see glucose is going to be more in the blood in the blood whenever the necessity will come so that glucose is going to be formed from glycogen so remember it has conversion of the glycogen into glucose this is the major function of glucagon conversion of the glycogen into glucose where do you see the effect of this glucagon effect on liver and adipose tissue so it affects on liver and adipose tissue which makes the major function conversion of the glycogen into glucose so this is going to be antagonistic function what is the function of insulin insulin lowers the blood glucose level just see here in case we said in case of glucagon raises the blood glucose level glucagon raises the blood glucose level and what is the function of insulin insulin lowers the blood glucose level one work again is another we call antagonistic antagonistic one works again is another that as we have seen earlier like msh and melatonin and uh, calcitonin and parathormone okay so now let's see here the major functions of the insulin then that stimulate the transport of glucose from blood to muscle and adipose cells and indirectly causing the liver we are seeing from the beginning what is indirectly that i'll say the mechanism now causing the liver to take up glucose promoting both oxidation of glucose and conversion of the glucose into glycogen in muscles as well as liver cells inhibiting the metabolic breakdown of stored glycogen in liver in and muscle cells Okay, it it inhibits the metabolic breakdown of stored glycogen in liver and muscle cells. Then promoting the synthesis of fats from glucose by adipose tissue, and also inhibiting the metabolic breakdown of the fat. The complete again is, isn't it? With glucagon, promoting uptake of amino acids by liver and muscle cell, and stimulate the protein synthesis while inhibiting the protein breakdown. So where do you see the effect? Effect on liver, muscle, and adipose tissue. That similar like uh, in the glucagon. Okay, so contrast function. Whatever we said in case of glucagon, again is to be said here. Okay, so uh, let's take uh, first of all. Let me say, uh, take the uh, somatostatin. Let us complete. Then after we'll go with the action of the insulin. Somatostatin. What we said it inhibits the secretion of both glucagon and insulin. decreases the secretion motility and absorption of the digestive tract okay so then next now 
let us see let us see the about uh, wait 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 we lost the connection so we'll go with that let us see about uh, the action of insulin action of insulin is uh, need to see here we need to see the action of insulin i'm taking white screen for that wait let me connect back toward the screen so let's take the full white screen so uh, liver cell so i do remember you what we learned in the digestive system first of all so uh, when we said about the hepatic portal system we learn this story uh, in case of hepatic portal system that uh, in the intestinal microvilli from the microvilli all the blood capillaries of the microvilli is going to be uh, started from here uh, that absorb the digested food material that microvilli absorb digested food material are going to become hepatic portal vein did you remember hepatic portal vein where it goes it goes to the liver it opens into the liver hypothetical diagram i am giving here don't compare the visuals with the original so just showing uh, that portion that's all hepatic portal vein for example your intake if your intake of glucose uh, for example here also don't compare with any human uh, 1000 grams of glucose is taken did you remember with the same story explained the 1000 grams of the carbohydrates or glucose are taken 1000 grams of the glucose but imagine we need only 100 grams so we, we that actual calculation 180 mg per 100 ml of blood we are not going for the calculation that's to understand okay so uh, this is hepatic vein this hepatic vein joins with the post caval vein and post caval vein which goes to the heart from the heart it will be supplied to all over the body so that means in case of hepatic vein we have only 100 grams if we take through uh, the blade the food through the food if you are taken 2000 grams we have only 100 grams in the hepatic vein how is it possible that we have to talk about that means if we are taken 1000 grams of the, the glucose the 900 grams of the glucose is going to be converted as glycogen that as we called it as glycogenesis okay so that listen carefully here we are going to find out the reason for diabetes which is a famous one diabetes type 2 which people usually say now we are learning the mechanism why how the people will get diabetes that what we are talking about for that only i am giving this introduction so be careful listen carefully focus uh, here So the thousand gram for this I am taking the basics we learn from the digest system also I am explaining here. Okay, so the thousand grams you are taking. Imagine you are taking two thousand grams, two thousand grams of the glucose. A hypothetical I am saying here. So how much you take I don't know. So I don't compare. So he is saying two 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 kg food I am eating in that way. Don't compare. So just for understanding we are talking about just for understanding. Okay, so uh, imagine. Oh, wait. yeah imagine you are taken 2000 grams so 1900 grams of the glucose excess which is released here converted as glycogen your vein hepatic vein still having 100 grams so how much you take no matter that's what to say that only i am increasing the amount don't uh, say here uh, 5000 grams of the food glucose you are taken carbohydrates you are taken even though you will find only 100 grams so 4900 grams is converted as glycogen so glycogenesis done by liver we said in digestive system now we are trying to see what happens that excess glucose which reaches to the liver what happens to that that we have to talk about okay that means glucose converted into glycogen by liver cell just i am showing a single liver cell to you what a liver cell can do a liver cell can convert the glucose into glycogen to convert the glucose into glycogen what is required 
to convert the glucose into glycogen what is required glucose is required isn't it to convert the glucose into glycogen we require glucose okay so that who is supplying you are you are supplying with a great effort breakfast lunch dinner so that what i am saying hepatic portal vein brings the 1000 grams but what's the problem here what is the role of insulin here this is the cell membrane the cell membrane you learn the properties of the cell membrane earlier it's a lipoprotein membrane it is having selective permeability or semi permeability the cell membrane is having selective permeability or semi permeability isn't it so so what that means there is no permission to the glucose to come in we are saying conversion of the glucose to glyc uh, into glycogen done by liver cell and now again i am saying there is no permission to the glucose glucose can't come inside so how is it possible that's what i said over to convert the glucose into glycogen in the liver cell what is required glucose required so you are eating no matter the from your side there is no doubt but i am talking about when it reaches to the liver how it goes inside how the glucose goes inside because we said the cell membrane is having selective permeability or semi permeability the selective permeability of semi permeability now let's bring our insulin now let's bring our insulin what is the role of insulin here insulin facilitates intake of glucose so we are correlating we learned in digestive system conversion of the glucose into glycogen done by liver cell now we are saying in uh, endocrine system insulin converts the glucose into glycogen no no insulin is not converting the glyco glucose into glycogen indirectly insulin facilitating the conversion of the glucose into glycogen that you need to understand indirectly indirectly means insulin what is the role of insulin supplying the glucose into the liver cell okay that means just a recommendation it is doing that asking the cell membrane please allow the glucose inside what do you call it as facilitated transport is it so this is the role you are eating the glucose need to come inside under the influence of insulin okay what a liver cell do conversion of the glucose into glycogen what an insulin can do which make uh, entry of glucose into glycogen okay so this is the thing will happen then what is diabetes diabetes mellitus type 2 particularly i am talking what is diabetes mellitus type 1 first of all let us see the type 1 type 1 is little bit rare you will find this in children also congenital by birth it may come so what is type 1 there is no insulin in case of these people there is no insulin insulin cannot be seen over so by birth by genetical issue or something else insulin is not there if insulin is not there the same story 1000 grams of glucose they are taken for example it comes to the liver okay but it comes to the liver but it cannot enter into the liver cell for their conversion isn't it it cannot enter into the liver cell liver cell lo ki enter avaledu it cannot be entered into the liver cell so that's the problem that means glucose levels in the body it will increase no conversion no conversion that means here there is no insulin no intake of glucose no intake of glucose means no conversion where do you see that glucose then in the blood itself the glucose levels are going to be increased that is type 1 diabetes infant diabetes we used to say this as absence of insulin infant diabetes okay so type 1 what is type 2 then let us see what is type 2 type 2 won't come in one day for type 2 diabetes mellitus we have to pay a lot of effort that means our effort should be the various kinds of food material junk foods we have to say why should i write the total issues pizza burger mcdonald dominos why should we write simply we'll write by eating that high carbohydrate diet food high fat food or simply we say junk food when we eat junk food what happen more glucose is coming more insulin is need to be released more it stimulates the intake of it means it is asking the liver cell membrane 
to get inside more glucose it is supplying so one day what happens one day that means over a period of time when this action is going on the liver cell membrane sensitivity lose again as the insulin we are not going to say insulin is reduced but what we are going to say even insulin ask to make the glucose to get inside the cell membrane don't accept because insulin cell membrane lose to uh, sensitivity again at the insulin even insulin is there glucose is not allowed but uh, normal healthy person what happens in normal healthy person when insulin says cell membrane allows glucose to get inside but what i am saying here continuous uh, that food habits makes over the cell membrane won't listen to insulin one day which cell membrane we are talking liver cell membrane okay liver cell is having capability to convert the glucose into glycogen okay but glucose to come inside isn't it so simply we say what is diabetes type 2 a late onset diabetes we say age 30 after age 30 where will come in general but nowadays because of uh, food habits the lower the age even coming but diabetes type 2 means we are talking about the sensitivity we lost again is the insulin that's why you are eating but not it is entering into the liver cell so this is a total story okay so with this i think you came to understand the disease is called diabetes mellitus disease is called diabetes mellitus it is by the hypo secretion of the insulin maybe uh, sometime not always general times we may write like this hypo secretion of the insulin but as i said to you hypo secretion the word best suit for only children but in adult sometimes insulin may be present but it lose sensitivity again as the liver cell membrane that uh, even insulin says liver cell don't listen that's what we are talking about sensitivity okay so then uh, there are two types as uh, what i said now type 1 and type 2 type 1 is said to be early onset diabetes or infant diabetes type 2 diabetes is said to be late onset diabetes or uh, adult diabetes okay this is because of dietary problem whatever it is if, uh, if you don't blame the children those who have by birth insulin if uh, he is taking insulin injection so we should not blame them because that is a genetical problem but for this we can blame ourselves here early ages nowadays very late, early age people are getting okay so uh, that's it that's the story of uh, Uh, that insulin let's let's continue here that pancreatic disorders now the mechanism i explained just we'll go with simply here hyperglycemia what is hyperglycemia raising the levels of the glucose in the blood we say hyperglycemia so when does the glucose levels will be raised over in the blood when glucose cannot enter into the liver cell so why why because uh, now we can say hypo secretion of the insulin that it cannot enter inside the liver cell it cannot be converted into glycogen that's why in the blood glucose levels are going to be increased what do you say hyperglycemia it results from the hypo secretion of the insulin the symptoms include high blood glucose level and breakdown of muscle tissue loss of weight tiredness that all will come here because of this particular you may get doubt here when we have high blood glucose white tiredness okay that we have some mechanism we'll discuss okay so that uh, hypoglycemia so what is hypoglycemia it results from hyper secretion of the insulin less times it happens here because uh, in diabetic people when they take overdose of insulin injection it may happen okay so what happened blood glucose level suddenly drop down hunger sweating irritability the double vision you may have seen over the sweating is a basic symptom in the people with hyper secretion it will be happen only in the cases uh, uh, in general we are talking in general uh, those people who are taking diabetic insulin injection if the it is a uh, annoyingly uh, overdose it was taken that leads to uh, this kind of low blood glucose and leads to the sweating hunger likewise isn't it so that is uh, insulin hyper secretion insulin hypo secretion okay let me discuss more about because this is a general issue that's why i'm i am and i'm trying to discuss that this is called diabetes mellitus we are talking about it. diabetes mellitus hypo secretion of the insulin is said to be diabetes mellitus what happens after this we need to go for the story 
high blood glucose we do, we can't retain high levels of glucose so say so what we'll do this excess glucose which is present here will be sent to the uh, that uh, where we have to send the excretory waste is here to the kidney from the kidney it will be sent to urinary bladder for elimination that means excess glucose which is there in the blood will be eliminated to the urinary bladder can we send alone no we need to add water as long as glucose is there that along with that we need to add water glucose plus water will go in the urination okay so that means we are losing water from here okay and we don't have any control here how much glucose excess that means uh, are we sending excess no we are sending total it is excess feeling like so we are sending everything so that's why uh, we can say here the basic symptoms of the diabetes mellitus basic symptoms that uh, hunger because we are sending glucose thirsty condition high hunger and high thirsty condition thirsty because we are losing uh, uh, that uh, water that's why okay so technically when you want to say we can say like this polyuria polydipsia polyphagia polyuria polydipsia polyphagia the three we can say polyuria excess urination polydipsia that excess thirst polyphagia excess hunger so these are the basic symptoms of the diabetes okay so then remember this in the excess urination include glucose here uh, then let's uh, let me go for the diabetes mellitus we are just talking about is a group of disorders that lead to an increase in the level of glucose what do you say that as hyperglycemia now only say this is due to the under activity of the cells in the islets of langerhans that results in reduced secretion of insulin such a condition is called insulin dependent diabetes insulin dependent diabetes we can see here okay then insulin dependent diabetes what is insulin independent diabetes type 2 diabetes we are talking insulin is there this is infant diabetes generally so insulin is there but it is not uh, that cell membrane is not listening to the insulin for intake that means lost sensitivity this is the best mechanism that why i am showing here again and again because this is the mechanism simply we say there are so many other you may learn in your future classes but simply insulin by saying insulin even cell membrane is not listening to allow the glucose that's what we say simply okay and then let's continue Uh, we have to see the differences between the diabetes uh, mellitus and diabetes insipidus did you remember this diabetes insipidus adh anti diuretic hormone or vasopressin released from the posterior pituitary released from the posterior pituitary produced from the hypothalamus remember that the hypothalamus secreted uh, produced the adh uh, will come and store in the neurohypophyse of the pituitary gland in case of absence of this the problem will come in the dct distal convoluted tubule we can't absorb the water more that's why excess urination here also excess urination but what is the difference let's see the difference excessive and frequent urination excess thirst excessive eating these are polyuria polydipsia polyphagia in case of diabetes mellitus here excretion of large amount of urine in this excess urination will find glucose if this is without glucose without glucose we say simply we say diabetes insipidus insipidus direct meaning is tasteless it doesn't mean so it is tasteful that's what i am talking here in this urine glucose will be more in this urine just simply we say in the absence of adh excess uh, large amount of urine here the large amount of urine due to more glucose glucose plus water here in case of diabetes mellitus okay so the the thirsty and dehydration is common but what is additional here excessive eating that means polyphagia we can see more hunger we can see so this is diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus but basically this is the thing to be remembered over this is because of hyposecretion of insulin and this is because of uh, hyposecretion of adh anti diuretic hormone okay so that's it about uh, the diabetes insipidus and diabetes uh, mellitus okay so then uh, that uh, before i close this i'll i'll end up with a brief information pancreas we are talking about the pancreas comprises of uh, 
98-99% is contained enzymes, exocrine portion, which is going to secrete the enzymes for the digestion of food. Then endocrine portion, we have to talk about endocrine portion is in the form of eyelids of lunger hands. The eyelids of lunger hands are having the alpha cell, beta cell. We, are, we have to talk about endocrine. That's why I'm going with this. Alpha cell, beta cell and delta cell. Alpha cell secrete glucagon and delta cell secrete insulin. And uh, the, sorry, beta cell secrete insulin and delta cell secrete somatostatin. Somatostatin that are going to, going, having effect on both of uh, these two. Okay. So, this is, have you seen this? Uh, we are seen, we are discussing only disorders of insulin. Conversion of the glucose into glycogen. The basic function of insulin is conversion of the glucose into glycogen. What is the basic function of glucagon? Conversion of the glycogen into glucose. Conversion of the glycogen into glucose. Glucagon. Why glucagon don't have any specific uh, disease? Imagine, what is glycogen? Glycogen is a stored fat, stored food, stored uh, polysaccharide. And stored fats is also converted as glucose. But glycogen, okay. So that means when you are not taking food, then you are not uh, taking food, the glucagon is required. That uh, it, The stored food is need to be converted into glucose. Okay, no matter because uh, there, are, there are very few days without taking food, isn't it? So that's why in deficiency of glucagon, what happens? Mostly what happens? You can't convert the glycogen into glucose. What is the medicine? Okay, we can't convert from inside. We'll take from outside what's there in it, isn't it? We'll take from outside. So that's it. That's why there is no special disorder we have to talk about. Then here you need to remember the insulin. Insulin hyposecretion <coughs> leads to diabetes mellitus. So that means here of our, uh, this area, pancreas, to be learned means insulin. And I do remember you, pancreas, one more time, it is a mixed gland. Mixed gland. Okay. So that's it about uh, 